By far the most common mistake I see when adding a subwoofer to a truck is people will get a subwoofer that is far too large or has nowhere near enough air volume in the truck for that subwoofer and you don't wanna be one of those people making that mistake. We need to know how much space is available for our subwoofer upgrade so that we can choose our subwoofers for the right amount of air volume. But how do we do this properly so that we can avoid picking a subwoofer that's not going to sound good? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. And in this video, we're gonna take a look. So for those of you that follow along on the channel, as you may have guessed, this could possibly be the next build here on the channel. That's part of the reason that I need to get in here and start doing some measurements in order to see what's going to be best. So in this video, we're gonna be focused on measuring the space underneath the seat, but if you were using a truck that was a single cab and you were measuring behind the seat, the process is pretty simple, so this math is still going to apply to you. So first things first, let's get these seats folded up and all of this other stuff out of the way. With everything out of the way, we're going to start measuring our space. Now, yes, this is an F-150, which makes a subwoofer install a lot more simple as the floor as you can see, is completely flat. But if the floor of your truck has a hump or other things in the way, stick with me because we're going to cover the math for that as well. When I'm taking dimensions for an underseat enclosure, there's four main dimensions that I like to pay attention to, a couple more if you do have that hump, and that's why I have this document that I've created here for people that I work with to do an enclosure design. Usually the main basic shape for an underseat or behind the seat enclosure is a wedge shape. So that means that we need to take two dimensions in this direction, so two height dimensions. We need to take a depth dimension, and we need to get an overall width for the box. Now, of course, once we go through the measurement process on this video, we're going to have an idea what air volume we have to work with for our subwoofers. So really quick, I did want to mention our show sponsor for this episode, Crutchfield. We can use the Crutchfield website to quickly narrow down exactly what subwoofers are going to be perfect for our application. Not only can we search by the size of the subwoofer and its power rating, we can also search based on its air volume for a sealed or ported application. Even better yet, a lot of times for truck applications, we need to be able to search for a low profile subwoofer so we can use that as a filter as well. Crutchfield has been my go-to source for car audio gear for a long time, long before I even started the channel, which is part of the reason that I love working with them. If you guys wanna check them out and get a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, you can do so at the link down in the video description. So now that I have everything out of the way, I can fold this seat back down and we're gonna start with taking those height dimensions. Now you might think it's as simple as just going, okay, there's our height, but I do have a couple of pro tips for you here, things that you definitely wanna consider that can make a difference. First of all, you'll notice that I've left the floor mat in. And this is intentional because once the subwoofer enclosure is installed, I still wanna have this floor mat protecting the carpet. If that wasn't the case and you were looking for every little bit of space possible, you'd wanna pull this out. Something else I wanna pay attention to is if there is any support structure in this location under the seat. I can see here that I can squeeze it a little bit before I can feel kind of a metal spot on the inside of the seat. And that's something I wanna take into account because if I do want to get, again, every last little bit of space, it's worth noting that I could push into this just ever so slightly, and it's just going to sit down on top of the box. It's not going to hurt the seat, but it might be important for getting that little bit more space so that we can fit a larger subwoofer on this face here if we are doing forward firing. Now something else to consider, especially when we're doing these height dimensions, is if we're doing a seat lift. We're definitely going to want to account for that addition of space at the end of our dimensions. One more final thing to consider before we take this front height dimension is we want to account for how far out the box is going to come. Let's say that we want to shoot for having a 12 inch down firing subwoofer. That means we need at least about 13 inches when you go to the outside of the sub in this direction. But let's say from here to here is only 12 inches. Well, now we know that we want to have the box come out a little bit more from the seat. So we'd want to add that extra inch. So when we take our height dimension here, we'd want to come out a little bit and eyeball where this line goes to the front height. These are all different things to account for. In my case, I want to be flush with the front of the seat here, and I know that I can push into it a little bit. So we're going to say eight and three quarters inches for that front height. 
Next, we're going to take our back height, and I wanna make sure that I watch out for this little curvature here. The floor is flat until this point, so I'm gonna measure the height from here up to the seat. That gives me about five and three quarter inches. Now I need to remember approximately where I took those two height dimensions because I'm going to measure that for my depth. So from this point to if we eyeball it right here, that is 13 inches of depth. Now I'm going to measure the width dimension from left to right in the vehicle. And obviously this is where you want the enclosure to end underneath the seat. You don't want it to necessarily stick out past the seat. And in my case here, the floor mat kind of allows me to cheat. I wanna make sure that I'm on the inside of these edges of the floor mat. So if I measure that, I'm right at 55 inches. Now, what if there is a hump or another obstacle, something like a seat belt tensioner or something else to go around? Remember that at this phase of the project, we are just looking to approximate how much air volume we have for our subwoofers. That way we can make the right choice when we go to buy them. So for that reason, I recommend keeping things simple and just boxing around it. In other words, let's say that we have a curvy floor hump like this. Instead of worrying about every last little cubic inch in these spaces and figuring out all of this exact math, just take approximate dimensions that allow us to box around it. So if this truck did have a hump in the middle, what I would do is I would measure from the edge of my width measurement to the edge of the hump and I would do that on each side. Let's keep it simple and for our example, we'll just say that that was 10 inches on each side. If we do 55 minus 10 minus 10, we know that the width of our hump is 35 inches. The next thing you would do is hold your tape measure up to the edge of the hump and you would eyeball over the top of it to get an approximate height. So for our example, let's say that that was three inches. If we do the math in order to determine how much volume we're losing from this notch here, we can do three times 35 times the depth of 13. That will give us the value in cubic inches that we're going to need to subtract later from the rest of our math. So we've taken our measurements. Now let's get into the math. And I know this is where some guys get kind of intimidated. I promise I'm gonna break this down, make it super, super easy for you to make approximations. But let's start with answering some of the easy questions. Let's look at the measurements of our side profile here and first think about our subwoofer size. I feel like I have to point this out because I can't tell you how many times I've had guys ask, hey, I wanna put 15 inch subwoofers under my seat. And then they give me their dimensions and the dimensions look something like this. So rule number one, do some measurements because as you can see, you're really not going to be able to put a 15 inch subwoofer under the seat when none of these dimensions are greater than 15 inches. If these are the dimensions I'm wanting to go with for my enclosure, I'm going to have to use a 12 inch subwoofer or smaller. And this is definitely something I wanna point out for those of you that might be new to car audio, because I know, I know, a lot of times the assumption is if I wanna have a ton of bass, I have to have large subwoofers. But that's not always the case. In fact, having a subwoofer that is too large and doesn't have enough air volume will actually underperform compared to a smaller subwoofer that does have the proper air volume for it to operate. In other words, small subwoofers and the proper air volume can still create a ton of output and sound really good. Now, I know for a lot of you guys watching this video, it's like, come on, Mark, that's obvious. Obviously, you can't put like a huge subwoofer in this space. But the other common mistake I see is people not taking into account the magnet size. In other words, the mounting depth of the subwoofer. Let's say that you were using a 12 inch subwoofer. Obviously you can't have it on this face cause it would be too small. You have to go down firing, which means that we have to raise the subwoofer up off the floor, which means we're going to lose some of our available volume since we're raising that subwoofer off the floor. But let's say you pick that 12 inch subwoofer and it has a large magnet on the back of it. Let's say it has a mounting depth of something like eight inches. If you're already a couple of inches off the floor and the magnet is eight inches and this back here is only five and three quarter inches, obviously your magnet is going to start to push into the seat and not be able to fit in this space. This is also something we wanna watch out for if we're mounting onto this face. Let's say we know this is eight and three quarters. So let's say we went with some six and a half inch subwoofers, but let's say they have these huge monstrous magnets on them that are going to stick back and the corner of the magnet is going to hit the top of the enclosure. These are all things that we need to account for. A good way we can check this later is literally take a piece of scrap cardboard and we can draw the side profile of the subwoofer to scale, cut it out with some scissors and we can make 
make sure that it actually fits under the seat. That's why I like having these guys here. This is the side profile of a JL Audio 13 TW5. We can quickly simulate if we're going to have enough room under the seat. But again, before we get that far, we have to know how much air volume we have available. So let's start working through the math. For our math example here, let's say that we're going to fire a subwoofer or multiple subwoofers forward on this face here. That will allow us to use all of these dimensions. If you were doing a down firing subwoofer, you want to determine how far up that subwoofer needs to come. And you're just going to subtract that distance from these heights. So let's say you wanted to space your subwoofer two inches up. Our new heights would be six and three quarters and three and three quarters. To break down our quick approximation math for a wedge, first of all, we wanna break this wedge shape into two different shapes. A wedge is basically just a rectangle combined with a triangle. So if I draw a line on here, you can see how that breaks down. So we're going to have a rectangle volume that we can easily determine the air volume for by doing 13 times five and three quarters times the width of 55. That equals 4,111 cubic inches. And then we want to find the volume of the top triangle part. So if we subtract five and three quarters from eight and three quarters in order to determine how tall that triangle part is, that's three inches. So we're going to do three times 13 times the width of 55. That gives us 2,145. But remember that we're doing a triangle. This volume here would be if this was a full rectangle. Since this is a triangle, we've basically cut that volume in half. So we just need to take this number and divide it by two. This gives us 1,073 cubic inches. And for those of you that are checking my math, again, remember, we are just approximating things here. We don't need to be perfect down to the cubic inch. That's why I rounded. So if we add the volume of the rectangular portion to the volume of the triangular portion, that gives us 5,184 cubic inches. Now we're going to divide that by 1728. Where does that number come from? If we were to make a box that was 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches, that would be one cubic foot. So we're dividing by 1728 just to convert from cubic inches to cubic feet. And it turns out I definitely didn't do this on purpose. It just happened to work out this way. But 5,184 divided by 1728 is exactly three cubic feet. So that means for my application here, what we measured in the F-150 that does not have a floor hump, this total space is three cubic feet. Now this is where if you did have a notch, you would do that math that we talked about earlier. You would do 35 times three inches times 13 inches. You would divide whatever that is by 1728 and that would give you the cubic feet of your little notch here. You could subtract that from your total and that would tell you what your new total is without using that volume. So we've calculated three cubic feet, but we are not done yet. Please don't make the mistake of thinking, okay, so I have three cubic feet of airspace to work with because that's not the case. We need to account for displacements. When we build the box, we're going to have wooden materials that eat into that air volume. We're also going to have bracing and other internal structures that eat into the air volume. The subwoofer itself is going to take up air volume. So we need to account for that in our approximation before we pick a sub. Now I have designed and built literally thousands of enclosures now. So I've been able to come up with an approximation that will allow us to determine early on what kind of air volume we actually have available. Again, I want to stress this is an approximation that we're doing early in the process. If we were actually designing an enclosure, we would want to be much more particular about the measurements and all of our math, but we're just doing an early approximation to pick our sub. So what we can do is we're going to take that three cubic feet, and if we want to use a sealed enclosure, we're going to multiply it by 0.8. So in this case, that value becomes 2.4 cubic feet. In my approximations, if I have this amount of space and it's three cubic feet beforehand, usually with a sealed enclosure, I end up with about 2.4 cubic feet to work with for the subwoofers. Now with a ported enclosure, we end up with less usable air volume. And that is because with a ported enclosure, we have to account for the actual port inside the box taking up space. So for my application, if I had three cubic feet of total volume before, if I was using this for a ported enclosure, I can approximate that I'm gonna have about 1.65 cubic feet of usable air volume for ported. 
When you see this number, you can see why doing all of this math is really critical because at first you might've thought, okay, great, three cubic feet, I could put I don't know, like two 12s in that on the smaller side. But once you do all the math, if you wanted it to be ported, you could see, oh man, maybe that's only more of an air volume for like two eights or a larger single 10. Depending on the subwoofer, definitely something to account for. And at this point, we wanna consider how many subs we wanna use. Let's say that we did wanna use two subwoofers in a sealed application. That means we're going to wanna look for a subwoofer that can use 2.4 divided by two. That's 1.2 cubic feet sealed. And again, this is where it's really nice to have a website like Crutchfield where you can go through and quickly identify subwoofers that would fit within that target. Now that we know how to properly measure the space for a subwoofer in a truck, we can make the right choice in picking that subwoofer. Don't forget that if you guys wanna learn more about show sponsor Crutchfield and see how easy it is to pick a subwoofer on their site. Definitely check them out here and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Bart, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.